Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where we're talking about TV shows of the supernatural fantasy and or science fiction or genre. For today's episode, I'm gonna talk about the season premiere of the Outpost. A lot of interesting things a lot of interesting things went down in this season premiere. So let's break down a lot of stuff we had. I was actually kind of surprised by the uh beginning. It's interesting because obviously it's only been two weeks since season one's finale. And so, you know, Garrett and his team, it's kind of interesting because we get a little more perspective on just how cruel the prime order can be like they come across a kingdom that's no longer a kingdom it was a castle and there's like a body hanging up and like it's like just skin and it's just bone and it has traitor written on it's like oh apparently that was like a kingdom that wouldn't bow down to the prime order so they burned the castle down and killed everyone inside and left the, the king or the person who ran the place left him there as kind of a symbol like this is what happens to traitors and one of the dudes there is like is that what's going to happen to us that is what's going to happen if dread gets to the capital before we can catch up to him you know, sadly, Garrett and his entire team gets washed by Dread, and I'm blinking on her name. I want to say in the S, uh, the name of the lady that works with them, um, they end up killing everyone. Sadly, Garrett almost had Dread, but I guess if that dude had had uh, Garrett's back, maybe things could have been differently, but sadly, we see Garrett go down. It's like, wait, is Garrett actually dead? Because the thing is, Dread knows that she's someone, he's someone that's important to most likely to Gwen, but also definitely, you know, she's, he's definitely so important to Talon, so that might be something they play with, or maybe straight up, Garrett is dead. Either way, I mean, plus, you know, who knows, because we never saw the aftermath of whether he, we saw him close his eyes, but that doesn't necessarily mean he's dead. I mean, maybe he found a way out on his own, or, but I kind of get the feeling like Dread could have taken him as, you know, hostage to kind of use against Gwen or Talon, you know? Dude ends up riding back because he runs away from the situation. But there's a lot of interesting things to pick up with. Obviously, we have the whole situation with Jonzo. I love the fact is that he's talking to a plague lady the entire time. It's like, oh, she kissed me. She said she loves me. Correction, she loves you like a brother. She made that clear. But he's just so caught up in his whimsy and everything. It's like, oh, you know, if Garrett's out of the way, which now, he, you know, obviously he said that at the time not knowing it. But it's like, if Garrett's out of the way, I have a better chance, you know. And just the fact of the matter is, you know. Him just being like, oh, maybe I can change things from a brotherly love to, well, you know, and just having that full-blown conversation uh, with the Plagueling was kind of interesting. Um, along with all that, there's the whole Withers situation. Once again, it's so weird to just see him and, uh, also, I, I, it kind of, it's always interesting. She does not actually go by her real name. Everyone still refers to her as, like, obviously they refer to her as Queen, but more often than not, when people are talking to her, they just call her Queen. I guess that's what most people kind of know her as. So, I guess until she takes a rightful place, she won't officially go by her. Well, because I think it's also because, you know, uh, Calcazar, like, you know, his daughter, like, she filled the role, filled the role of his daughter, not just pretending, but also became like his daughter. And it's like I became Gwen for him, and so I want to go by Gwen because that's what my other father, you know, knew me as and loved me from that name, you know. So I think maybe that's what that's supposed to be like a remembrance of that. I mean, she's been Gwen for so long. I guess it's kind of hard to just kind of leave that identity behind. But nevertheless, it's just one of those things I just notice but withers and her going back and forth the whole conversation of like he's telling her you need to let your people take breaks most people are afraid to talk to you because they might hurt you you know bruise your ego whatever he's like me i'm not worried about hurting your little bratty feelings and so he kind of he's not afraid to tell her like it is and it's like if you do not give them a break which her justification for not giving them a break is understandable it's like dread might come back with his troops and we need to be on ready but it's like if we don't take let them take breaks kind of live their lives if we just keep pushing them like this they're going to grow to resent you and eventually when the time comes they might choose to work with the prime order again so what you need to do is give them a reason to love you and we see that later on when she also says the guy it's like hey you go rest a little bit then tell you know at the night shade drinks are on the queen and he's like thank you ma'am so it's like okay showing like hey you know you gotta show that you know it's not you not just do the ruling thing you gotta do the small things too as a leader to show your people like hey i'm here with you i understand i'm not gonna work you to death i'm gonna show you obviously the whole thing of showing like she made a point last season too to be like hey we're nothing like the prime order we handle things lawfully in our own way so also there's a whole thing of like hey let's look for the trailer which we still don't know is well they still don't know is naya so there's that whole complicated thing obviously talon is working with the dragman what's interesting is the dragman only gives her one name she keeps giving the same name over and over again i guess it's the one she got last season and it's been days and days and just keeps giving the same one but it's like 
I guess like the dragon kind of understands that there's a process. If you do too much at two once, like it's probably like there's probably like she has to grow her strength as a black blood to like be able to lead an army of the carried. So like doing too many at once will kind of stretch her power too thin and she'll lose control of them and there'll be hundreds of of like wild Lahiri out in the world. So that might be the justification for it. Or maybe there is some grander plan and just how this whole thing breaks down. But Talon tested out the name. She summons a Lahiri, but that Lahiri isn't alone. There's a night blood with her. Black blood. I'm gonna mess up on that just because it's like I think I talked about this in season one too, the whole like night blood thing and the one hundred and this black bloods. I, I think I've even called people black bloods in the 100 just because of it. Nevertheless, it's a whole tangent. But it's interesting because it turns out Talon's actually come across another before. Basic, and it's so interesting because like we see her hunting with her family. And I think that's so fascinating because it's like, that's an element that was like, like we didn't even flash to that before. It's like, oh, like I was like, oh, we're going to flash, you know, through that, like some lessons she learns from the family, like throughout the season, kind of like an arrow situation of flashing to the past of how she got to where she was. I thought maybe that's where they were going to head in that direction. Maybe eventually they will for the rest of the season. Maybe not. Maybe it was something we get here and there. Who knows? But it, it was just showing, because we haven't seen her with this family since season one, the first episode, in fact. After that, it never showed up again. So, but it turns out back then she ran into another Nightblood after he killed her family, because it's like, oh, they're only human. So that's so interesting, because her people were all kind of about peace. Like, obviously, you know, there's issues between uh, Black Bloods and humans, more so on the human side of things, but the Black Bloods kind of kept to themselves. It seems like this group is a more radical group, who's just like, oh, we're so above and more superior than humans, because the whole thing it's like we're the whole reference of like pure bloods i'm guessing talon is kind of a mixture i'm sure like her like the black bloods from her village are probably half and half that because basically the whole thing was like basically a lakiri and a human got together and that led to the black blood situation so but did you would assume because they look human too that they were the same but they used the remark of pure so it makes it seem like talent was diluted and maybe it was the whole conversation never came up about her dad like her mom was around but it probably a situation that her dad was human so she's probably even less of a black blood i mean doesn't matter in the grand scheme of your blood but she might be only like a fourth whereas this lady and her brother were full night bloods night black bloods see i'm doing it again i apologize but nevertheless uh, back then, um, Talon ended up killing him because for him, it's like, oh, I want the thing that's in her head that lets her control the um, Lakiri and open the portal. It's like he wanted that. It's like you, your mom passed it on to you and you were supposed to give it to me, which is like, no. The fact is, if you wanted it, supposed to have it, why wouldn't she give it to you? You know, why would she pass it to Talon? Because I guess the whole point was to keep it out of it. Because it turns out they were locked in there with the Lakiri. I guess like... Because the way the whole conversation goes later on, it turns out those people are much older than what they seem because time works differently inside of the uh, realm of Shadow and Ash. So, at the very least, that woman's been in there for 300 years. Question is, why is he out and his sister was still there? It, it might be a situation of somehow when someone opened a portal previously, Bathnero. Maybe there's a connection there. Last time Baphnero came out, maybe he came out with them, and but whoever had the power took control of Baphnero from him. Because it seems like, I guess like there's a bond created between the um, the Black Bloods and the Lakiri in that world because the Lakiri that's with her wouldn't listen to Talon even though she has that power just because it's like they've had this bond for probably hundreds centuries maybe so it can't be as easily broken like maybe if she gets enough power she can but she has to probably train and push at it more like there's a whole more there's a whole complicated situation with all of this so what's interesting though too is like oh she tried to cut it out of talon but because i thought it was weird because like oh it's at her neck i was like why is that and it's like oh and she has a cut on her head because she was trying to cut it out of her head but it moved because i think it's a situation where it's like it's a thing that has to be given willingly it can't be taken it doesn't work like that um so i just thought that's kind of interesting i think it kind of like i know this you know, I make a lot of video game references. It's kind of like um, Infinite Undiscovery. It's a video game you might not be familiar with, but essentially they have these lunar um, glyphs that basically say you have one on the back of your palm of your hand. If your hand gets cut off, it'll move to a further spot up your arm, and then further and further. It, it moves, so it kind of works in that same way. I, I know it's a parallel I didn't have to make, but it just it kind of popped in my head when I thought about it. But nevertheless, um, so there's that. 
And now Talon's in that complicated situation of, okay, so she can't summon any other Lakiri to fight because, for one, it'd just be playing into what she wants because she wants a portal open so she can bring more people and Lakiri through. But also, at the same time, it's like, but also, like, she doesn't know any other name. She can only summon a Lakiri if she knows their name, and she doesn't know any other name because the Dragman only gave her the one, so... There's that whole complicated thing, so... Now, this other, uh, Black Blood is like, Oh, you'll join my side. Next time we meet, we'll be allies and everything. Because it's the whole conversation of, like, yeah... He, kind of like the whole thing of, like, Oh, yeah, humans are kind of beneath us. And I guess, once again, that's kind of, like, the more extreme route. And why they were kind of locked away with the Lakiri. Because they were probably using the Lakiri... Like I said, it's probably, like, the more radical sides. Like, obviously, like I said, the Night Blood's, like... Talon and her village were the more peaceful side, whereas... This night, Blood and her brother with a more radical side of, like, we need to wipe out humans, they're a plague, which is interesting because, obviously, humans are having their own war right now, you know, Gwen slash Rosman, you know, that monarchy going up against the Prime Order, and now it's the whole situation, and now Talon's got a battle of her own against, potentially, well, not only killing Dread and getting revenge and breaking down the whole Prime Order, but also having to deal with this side of things, so it's going to add an interesting element to this episode, uh, the season. Obviously, there's some other interesting things. Obviously, Eleanor uh, continuing the whole Calypsum trade, which is like, no matter how much Jonzo made a point last season, we saw at the end, that like, obviously, she's still pushing for it, but it's like, you know what it's doing. And that's the whole thing, too, because even Gwen made a point to uh, Withers about, like, even though she outlawed it, things, Calypsum is just as big, if not bigger now, even though, but, you know, and it's something John's already brought up, it's like, it's an addiction, like, you can't stop people from getting it, like, people are addicted to it, so they're gonna break the law to get it, I mean, you know, obviously there's parallels to real life because of that whole complication, but, so, even though people know, hey, word spread out about, oh, Calypsum leading to Plaguelings, no one's listening just because they're like, eh, I don't care, I need to get my fix, you know, it's like, hey, as long as I'm getting stunned by Plaguelings, I'm fine. I'm sure some people make that justification, but Eleanor's taking advantage of this situation. She's making more Calypsum, she's taking Plaguelings, and basically, you know, oh, the flies get born, and they lay their eggs, which is the Calypsum, and that whole thing, like, she's... The only one who builds like a more organic farm is kind of how she refers to it as, which is sick and disturbing. Also, uh, what was it, Borgen? Brogan uh, is the new, uh, he's Mutt and um, John Zoe's new brother. I guess he's the Bill replacement, but I guess he's a combination of, oh, Bill, because it's like, oh, yeah, you do whatever your mother says, but also John Zoe because you're supposed to kind of represent the kind of smart son or whatever. Um, but uh, obviously, you know, Eleanor is also kind of just messing with the gray skins because it's like, oh, yeah, tell them we're going to set up a trade here. But honestly, no, I just want to, you know, just know that they're out there waiting in that specific spot. It's like, you know what the gray skins plans are, but for her, she thinks she can, you know, outwin this like her obsession with power and money she thinks it's like ah who cares what happens in the end the gray skins are idiots like she doesn't really believe that they're as smart as Jonzo kind of gives him credit for trying to create this conspiracy of like using Calypso to basically make humans destroy themselves she doesn't really believe in that more so than anything she just doesn't care it's like I need to get what's mine and what I want I'm tired of living just being good I want to be better I want to have it all the world in the palm of my hands type of thing so there's that. So that's definitely going to be interesting to see that storyline continue down. Because obviously I brought that up last season on how interesting it was. I believe I brought that up. Like the whole thing about like Calypsum just being like a background thing. And then it turns out to be such a huge plot point. You know, so. Which is interesting because that kind of coincides with the Grayskins. They're such a background thing. Yes, it's a plot element. But obviously like the Prime Order is the biggest threat. They're still a threat themselves. So it's like threats on multiple fronts. But it seems like the Prime Order obviously take priority. Then it seems like maybe the Black Blood thing might kind of creep up to be kind of very important. But obviously you can't count out the Grayskins and the whole Calypsum situation being something on its own. So. There's all of that. Then there's the news about Garrett, which hits everyone, especially Withers, when he literally beats the crap out of dude. Because for him, it's like, you left your commanding officer. But it's like, I couldn't do anything. He was already dead. It's like, but still, you know. Obviously, Withers is just lashing out because he lost his son. And obviously, this hits everyone hard because, you know, Withers and, you know, Rosamond actually kind of mourn a little bit together. They're crying, and he wants to bring his boy back. It's so sweet and, you know, sad because it's like, obviously, like, Withers and Garrett made up a little bit last season. They have their very complicated relationship, but they were on good terms. But then also the whole situation of like when it was all said and done, you know, there's so much 
history and bad blood that like you know they never had a chance to really kind of make up for all that lost time you know so i think that's probably something that really bothers withers obviously telling him what's to go is like oh we got to go after dread but it's like dread's long gone by now it's like garrett might not be dead i don't want him to be dead either but he might be i mean it's been five days since that soldier rode back dread's got a 10 day start ahead of you so he's most likely back at the capital you want to go in there and fight i get it but you won't make it that far as a suicide mission all you can do is stay here you need to do something i understand you lost someone you cared about i know but you need to stay here prepare your army do the whole akiri thing and help quinn take down a prime order once and for all you know i hate that you're right i like that she says and he was like i'm always right which you're not but still so there's that and that kind of ties into i might as well circle back to the whole complicated relationship between gwen and talon in the sense that you know gwen associates it with like okay because you saw me and garrett last in the season finale so obviously that's going to bother you but it's like it's not a jealousy thing which yeah i think it plays a little bit of a role in it the reason why she hasn't been around rosman like the past two weeks apparently like they haven't really seen each other uh but it's also because it's like well for one it's like you're trying to say like i'm your friend and everything but the fact of the matter is look at the way you kind of treat me and stuff well for one it's like you let dread escape my blade because it's like hey i want to execute him myself like so it's like you took away my revenge which would have been revenge for everyone because more so for your own personal revenge but she's like you had a chance it's like Jonzo was going to die you, are, 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 honestly, I was about to say, would he ever really die? It's like, well, yeah, back in, I mean, obviously, this is like a medieval show, too. So it's like, and especially in that time, like, not treated wounds quickly enough. It could have been an issue if she hadn't cauterized it and taken care of it. So it's like, but even Gwen kind of being a little callous, being like, well, maybe that's true. But your duty and stuff like that. And it's like, that's the point. You treat me like I'm not your closest friend and whatnot. But then the next moment, you also treat me like a weapon. It's like, well, do they have to be, you know, exclusive? And it's like, you know... Because I think she's, you know, she's trying to juggle like the whole I'm Gwen, but I'm also a queen. So I have my responsibilities. You yourself have your own responsibilities and all in this talent, too. And it's like, yeah, she can't help but feel more like a weapon rather than her, your friend. Just the way you act with this whole situation. But nevertheless, the whole Garrett thing does seem like it did bring them back together because it's like, it, you know, it wasn't just her loss. It was talents as well, you know, so them drinking and playing cards over the whole situation. It's actually kind of I think even talent had noted like it's actually kind of sad that when it's all said and done, I am the only friend that you have. Like with her complicated relationship, I'm the only person you can really rely on. She has Naya, who Naya has this whole thing of like, oh, you need to send people to go check on these barons and baronesses who used to have power, who basically got stripped of their powers and positions because of the uh, prime order you go to these people gather them as allies and you, you can get more help with this whole thing i chalk that up to many different things one you're either going to report back and give them the chance to kill those people beforehand i don't think that's a play i think naya's play is to get more soldiers away from the well no because they already know that they have a spy amongst their ranks so did any word of them doing that would lead to well, no, because Naya would be under the... Imp well, it'd be a complicated thing because at the very least, it'd be like, well, the only person that knows is Naya, so it's good. So Rosman would come... Well, Gwen would be like, okay, it's okay. So very few people know, so we can get this without there being an issue. But because my thought was like, okay, get pull soldiers away from the outpost, leaving it exposed, leaving Gwen exposed. It can come in there, thrash, and, you know, take or kill Gwen, whatever they plan on doing. So I think that's Naya's plan. So maybe maybe not it's gonna be interesting like obviously it's a whole complicated thing of like i get it you're, you want to save your family you're willing to do anything for them but it's like dude you have got a shit ton of blood on your head there are a lot of people that are dead because of you like you know so there's also that cult, like it's always been flowing in the back of my head and i think i might have thought this last season and definitely thought it rewatching. like is there any connection between naya and Jonzo? like is there something there especially because john uh, naya made that whole remark of like oh Jonzo, yeah he is kind of a weirdo isn't he so is there something there like it's because he remember he has a twin sister but i feel like he would have recognized i mean to be fair like they were super young uh at the time but still that's what I'm wondering about. Or is it going to potentially turn into a complicated love interest type of situation, even though he's madly in love with talent? I don't, I don't know. I'm interested to see where the, the whole Naya story ends up taking us. I'm curious to see where all of this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. But really, that's all I want to talk about. So next time we meet, be happy, be safe. Little light to the force and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.